What is up y'all? We're here for our Oracle manifestation message where we are checking in with our goals and our dreams and our purpose and our potential. And we're seeing how we can lean into more opportunities to uncover our potential and expand our potential and ways that we can overcome our shortcomings. So we are just taking a look at the week ahead to see how we should approach our goals and our manifestations. Okay, not surprising. Father healing, um, your personal power increases as you give any father related issues to heaven. Now, this is very interesting because this month of Virgo, we are doing prep for Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is coming up in mid-September, the 15th, 16th, and 17th. The new moon of September is on the 14th. And that new moon is a day that you do um, a, a, mitz a mitzvah called Tashlik. And that is a day that you cast your sins into bread and then you throw them into water. And by sins, we're talking about like you know, ways that you know that you failed to show up the way you wanted to this year. Um, ways that you could have been a better, you know, a family member, a friend, a coworker, you know, um, a better channel of the light. What were ways where you short circuited and you lost your temper or you were unkind or you slipped into a destroyer consciousness instead of a creator consciousness? Um, you know, go back and look to see like where were your weaknesses and what would you like to, you know, change moving forward in the year to come. And so part of the self-evaluation is bringing up, you know, a lot of things to do with our parents. We have this assigned, these assigned experiences that we have with our parents in this life and the difficulties as well as the support that we get and we give from and to each other. And so there are reasons why um, you antagonize and support one another the way that you do. You, you learn and grow from each other. And so part of your soul correction in this life is like making peace with that and you know learning the most that you can from it correcting you know your mindsets the limiting beliefs that you were left with or the guilt or shame or you know the way that you feel about yourself depending on what kind of mother wounds and father wounds you had and so the way that we think and feel about ourselves is going to affect the way that we act right so the feminine the way that we think and feel about ourselves and then the way that we act father healing like the way that we show up in the world so the more that we heal the way that we have been treated by our father and we see other examples of how like life has again mirrored that treatment and how we have to learn to be strong and stand up for ourselves and overcome that and, and stand in our own sovereignty and look to the heavenly, like divine creator um, source as our father and not our, our earthly father is that divine perfection of father archetypal energy, right? Because humans, you know, we have shortcomings. And so your father will come up short. Um, every father fails to meet the expectation of the, you know, father archetype. That's part of the cost of fatherhood. Um, and so just understanding how the dynamics we had and we shared with our parents affected us, you know, for better and for worse. And really getting to the root of that so that we can understand some of our unconscious impulses that have been driving us all this time. And by doing that, and, I, and there were, have been other messages coming up recently related to father healing cards that had to do with the more that we heal this father energy, the more that we will be able to like regather our energy and our focus and refocus and hone in with more intention um, and more purpose rather than scattering our energy and our attention and our resources, right? Chasing shiny objects or or you know sabotaging things that are only going to 
cause us to squander away our energy or our resources rather than using them with intention and growing, right? Because when we know that we deserve and we are worthy, when we start investing in ourselves that way, it's like we we don't allow, like we protect that. We want to protect what we've built, right? So your personal power increases as you give any father related issues to heaven. And we will we'll clarify these and go into a little bit more depth with the Modern Witch Tarot. Healing Heart. Wow, I hardly ever pull this card from this deck. You're a powerful healer. Keep up the great work. So, okay. Again, I, all day I've been cleaning. I've been listening to Kabbalah classes and Rosh Hashanah prep classes. And it's, you know, the prep classes are going into all of this self-evaluation stuff that we've already been doing. But I've just been really like inspired the last couple of days to hunker down, like clean and declutter and do some deep cleaning projects that I've wanted to do and get some things off of the to-do list and get really deep into to be magnetic work. Um, and you know, it's so effective when you do it like on a daily basis. And so I just, I had let my energy scatter and I wasn't being as consistent with those parts of my spiritual practice. And so I can see how quickly, um, your energy can slip if you're not constantly like managing it and staying on top of it. So if you've been doing and focusing on healing work, within yourself, keep doing it because it's having a very positive effect. And as you clear up the inside and as you clear up your surroundings, it's like you're, you have so much more bandwidth. I already feel so good because I've had a couple of extra days off this week and I have my regular two days off coming up. And so it was something that I really needed to just get on top of like things that like, I just wanted to do. And so now I feel like, oh my gosh, so unencumbered for my days off that I feel inspired to be creative. So it's really great. So on Rosh Hashanah, we get a new soul for the year. And that, that sets us up for like the opportunity to really reveal our potential and live, you know, a version of our life that's up leveled and more fulfilling than last year. We have the ability to take on as much light as we can contain as a vessel. It's just that when we short circuit, we we um, <clears throat> we lose those sparks of light because we then cover ourselves in the density of like the negativity, right? So it's about like maintaining that consciousness. That's why we're trying to really do the self-reflection going into Rosh Hashanah so that we know when we're there, we've got it in our mind, hey, these are the things that I'm ready to let go of. This is sort of like the the spiritual new year, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, this time period of like 10 or so days. Um, it's, it's very, like it, it, it ends the spiritual energetic year and it starts the new one. So this is kind of like an end of the year, reflection on where where do, you, where do you feel like you've gotten so far this year. Fortunately, we still have the whole fall to like really, you know, double down and finish strong. So yeah, think about that. Think about come, you know, mid-September, like really go deep over the next few weeks and sift through, okay, all right, where am I losing my drive and desire toward my dreams? Are they still in alignment? You know, um, are they in alignment with my true authenticity? Or is this something that I have taken on thinking that it will get me something or that, it, you know, I, I think it'll give me, um, you know, respect with others or approval or whatever. Is it really true to you? Maybe you're forcing yourself to do something that seems practical because you think it's irresponsible to do like what you have a passion for, but maybe there's a way to do both, you know, or maybe you, you're supposed to take a risk, but whatever it is, there, there might be so much inside of you that you've been wanting to do or to strive for. And it's, you know, to, now's the time. So really, allow yourself to keep doing the healing work because it's offloading so much of the static 
that has just made everything so much harder um, or created so much more chaos around the things that you were trying to do. Okay, let's do two more cards and then we will grab some tarot cards. Ooh, okay, so divine magic. Extra magical energy surrounds your situation right now. Expect miracles. You know, we have been getting messages of like good things coming. Like we will be, like there will be long-term value and fulfillment from our efforts. And the more that we do this now, it's like the more we can suddenly open ourselves up to receiving. On Rosh Hashanah, we are receiving like a full blasts of the light of God, um, cleansing, you know, all of this through. It's a huge opportunity every year to turn ourselves in essentially to the county courthouse and say, you know, wash me free of all of this baggage, you know, and, and if I can get out of my own way, then maybe I can go forward and have, you know, a, a year of grace and, um, and more ease and more certainty. Alchemy, you have the Midas touch right now and every project you begin turns to gold. So focus on healing and then with uh, a lighthearted um, sense of optimism and with drive and passion, reconnect to why you want the dreams that you have, why you want to do what you want to do. Um, what purpose does it serve? How does it help others? Like what, you know, what does, what sense of um, satisfaction and fulfillment do you get from it? And so go and start doing and start taking action when you feel divinely inspired. Remember though, when you're, you're creating with your seed level consciousness, so get in that primed, optimistic state and then follow through on the hunches that you're getting, okay? Um, yes, and if anyone is interested in 2B Magnetic work, if you're familiar with them, I have a link. Um, I, I swear I manifested this, but they started, a, I, I kept saying for like over a year that I needed to be an affiliate, but they didn't have a program. And then they started an affiliate program. So I have my affiliate link and a 15% off coupon for a year's worth of their um, membership down below, if you can follow the link. But if you don't know about them, they are, so Lacey Phillips took all of the, you know, best, most proven things that are true about manifestation and the law of attraction and neural science and subconscious patterning. And she combines psychology with the manifesting and into like this unified, like uniform system. And so it combines um, different elements, but one of those elements being um, workshopping through the major areas of your life and doing these deep imaginings that get you into this hypnotic state where you can rewrite your subconscious. And so it's instead of bypassing, you're going really deep into the work of healing and therapy essentially, but it's like self-guided, like you're doing it at your own pace. So you may need an, an extra therapist. However, it goes even more focused, I think, than just talk therapy. Um, because it's, you don't have, I'll just say that. I'll just leave it at that. Um, there are an, like also inside the pathway, there are like monthly like calls that they have and conversations. They answer questions. There's like, there's so much Re there's so many resources and tools in the website that I haven't even been able to like use them all. So it's more than than the value of thirty dollars a month, and I think with the discount it'll be like twenty something. So um, it's it's one of the the best things that I have that I have a membership to. Uh, but if you don't, if you're not familiar with their work, you can listen to their podcast. It's called Expanded. And I would listen to one of the process episodes um, where someone tells their story about how they use the work to like manifest what they want. And so while you're doing the healing work, you're unblocking your subconscious. And then at the same time, you're like, you're passing these tests that the universe is sending you and you're not settling for 
less than, you know, you're, you're testing your self-worth, you're testing your, your trust and you're growing those things. At the same time, you're like rewriting your neural pathways and you are, you know, so there's so many elements going on in the formula, but, uh, yeah, check it out. I have the link if you're interested, but it's the best, um, my favorite, uh, other than Kabbalah. Like I use Kabbalah center and TV magnetic work for my, my constant source and my consistent system of, of, uh, healing and self personal development. Okay. So to clarify father healing, we have judgment, judgment. Um, this is the repentance card. The judgment, um, card usually has Archangel Gabriel blowing the trumpet, um, which is reminiscent or even congruent with the shofar. The blowing of the shofar, there's a lot of deep consciousness that goes into the actual blowing. The person who blows it has to have done all of this prep and there's certain rhythms and lengths of spurts and different um, <clears throat> ways that you hold your mouth and your cheeks and it's it, there's there's a reasons for all of it but the physical sound is like a catalyst that draws down this certain particular essence of the light of the creator that cleanses the soul in on the, like a miniature judgment day on a once a year judgment day where we are cleansed and born anew again essentially so all of these people who are stepping up from their graves it's like they have gone through that judgment um the process of judgment is it's not i mean there is pain in it but it's not intended to punish or destroy. It's actually intended to cleanse and purify, to elevate and to ultimately bring fulfillment because it gets rid of the ego self. It gets rid of the small self. It gets rid of the shells of negativity that keep our spirit buried, that higher self, that authentic self that can live a life that we dream of, that can like facilitate that for us. We, you know, when we're doing this work, that's what we're trying to connect with. That's what we're trying to eliminate all of the stuff that has just built up over time and gotten in the way, right? It's just this grime. And that's what I, I was thinking of all day. It's like, oh, I'm doing these cleaning things. It's like, I'm, I'm getting rid of all of this, this crud and this buildup. But, you know, I went, even went outside and was like pulling weeds and was fertilizing. And, and so, yeah, just the, the, the things that you're doing can be this living prayer um, when you bring intention to it. But yeah, there's definitely an aspect of redemption and renewal and um, reconciliation. And there's this, um, this process of self-reflection this month. It's called Teshuva. It's called, ret it's returning to the path, right? It's, it's recentering. It's getting back in alignment, right? Um, with, you know, a, a consciousness of unconditional love, sharing, radiating the light, being a channel for the light, unconditional, eternal. It's not no matter what, it's not being, it's not loving someone and like continuing to give like your full self in a, an abusive relationship. Like you can love from a distance. You can love with boundaries. Um, but unconditional love, like the agape love is like this essence that you have that's, it sustains and you're connected to it through source, not outside, not through people, not through experiences, not through your surroundings. It's not something that comes from outside. It's something that you connect with from inside because it's direct with the creator. So we're connecting with that. And because we're connecting with that, it's helping us have the strength to really have a fully matured perspective of our father, understanding how our relationship with our father has shaped the person that we've become and has affected us in ways that we can now let go of and heal from and that we're ready to forgive, right? Just even for the sake of, of, of freeing both of the parties involved, right? When you are holding a grudge, you're attached to that too. And so it's the energy is robbing both of you. So redemption, renewal, repentance, 
um, returning to the path to Shuva. Um, okay. Correction from sin. Um, and then sin is, is missing the mark. It's being off out of alignment, not getting the point, just, just kind of missing it, not being awakened or consciousness or, you know, or not being conscious. Um, acting in, you know, re reactive mode, you know, from the ego, from fear, from lack, from doubt, from, you know, control, from, you know, greed and lust and obsession, um, or even acting from a, a place of victimhood or like, uh, what is it called? Not the opposite of a grandiosity, but like when you have an inferiority complex, that's the ego too. It's holding you back you know, pretending to keep you safe. So healing the heart, seven of pentacles. So healing the heart, it's like seeds well planted. This is a process that can't be rushed and it, you don't know like what, how long it takes to heal. So it's like have patience with yourself and have grace. It's not like you can expect to be fully, like we can fully change overnight. We can fully change in an instant. That's the, that's the miracle. That's the possibility of miracles. That's, at any given moment, like our consciousness can shift and everything can change, but we don't have to hold like ourselves to a standard of perfection, right? It's okay. We are here to learn from our mistakes. Um, and so if we've made them, it's about seeing them and recognizing them without falling into like complete shame and guilt and feeling self-loathing about it and falling into despair, right? Because that's when the Satan wins and that's when the female Satan gets double the points and that's when you've, you've, you've lost your sparks because, you know, it's, it's okay to make mistakes. It's not okay to know that you're making a mistake and doing it anyway. It's okay to accidentally make mistakes. Um, and then when you, you realize it, you make up for it, right? And you, or you, you know, you try to realize that and change, but you don't have to feel, cause like part of the self-evaluation, part of it is the, the challenge is not getting down on yourself, not seeing all the ways that you could have been more like this or that, or could have done this differently and you, you would have, and you know, maybe just, just think, okay, great. Now I see that this is the whole point of the process. You know, we've been talking about how it was the fall of Adam and Eve that allowed for the physical reality. Otherwise we wouldn't even have a purpose of incarnating as human beings without the purpose of the process. Uh, there's no reason for the physical existence, right? There's no need for um, this dimension. So accept that it's part of everyone's life. Like we are here to go through a process of soul expansion and awakening and transcendence. Um, and with that comes hiccups and mistakes. We're, we're human. We're not completely divine, right? We're only working towards our divinity. So we have to love ourselves where we're at and we have to love each other where we're at. And the more understanding we are with ourselves, the more understanding we can be with other people. You know, it's um, compassion is sometimes very difficult to extend um, to the self and to others. And, and when you can learn how to extend it in a way that's the most challenging for you, then you can give it more freely in, in all kinds of ways. Okay, what more do we need to know about divine magic? Everything we touch right now turns to gold. Uh, we are extra magical energy surrounds us right now. Um, expect miracles. And then we got King of Pentacles. <laughs> so yeah, talk about being able to, everything you touch turns to gold. It's like the King of Pentacles like knows the self mastery and they, they've got their self grounded and they have a good head on their shoulders and they are ready to take action and take practical action. They're pragmatic. Um, they can, you know, see a plan and execute it. They're stable. They're secure. They're the most solid and dependable of the kings of the, the suits. 
Um, they have the, they're able to have enough stability inside to have created stability and security on the outside as well. So they're good at making their dreams happen. They're good at creating abundance. They're good at executing plans and getting things done and being reliable. So trust yourself right now, take action, um, you know, be get like get nerdy about planning and making lists and um you know getting getting an action like a strategy going and do whatever you can to get into it and get you know enjoy the process of doing that and then take action on it actually follow up all right let's pull a card on alchemy you have the Midas touch right now and every project you begin turns to gold Knight of Swords, so like get to work. Knight of Swords comes in fast and hot. So it's like the Knight of Swords is focused, they're detail oriented, they see what needs to be done and they go for it. So right now, use that momentum. See what needs to get done. Don't hesitate, don't procrastinate, just chop away, chop away. Um, this, sometimes the Knight of Swords, I think it's the Knight of Swords, not the page of swords that is maybe watching someone. And so watch what others are, how others are achieving what you want to achieve. What is it about their um, process or execution? Like the structure of it, like don't copy other people, but what, what is it like um, about their system that's similar to yours that they did well? Um, I wouldn't say, blindly follow anybody else's system or even if it's proven because that was what worked for them. So you might have to learn to like follow your own hunches and, and guidance and instinct, but at the same time, um, they like use like, you know, proven methods or whatever and learn from others who have been there too. Um, and at the same time, you might have to like forge some of your own paths. All right, um, otherwise underneath um, all of that, there were, it was the tower reversed. So don't resist change, allow it to happen and go with it. Um, 10 of swords, um, the end of a painful cycle, um, page of pentacles reversed. It's like, to me, this is don't keep spinning your wheels, trying to take more and more classes to get more and more certifications, um, pretending that you're busy doing something that's not getting pushing you forward. Like the, the page of pentacles is a, is a diligent student, but sometimes they can just spend too long in the student phase. So take it's, it's about taking action letting change happen, letting endings happen and like letting go of what no longer serves you. what's no longer, you know, moving you forward, let go of painful cycles, painful patterns and heal from that, move forward and, and start taking action. The high priestess is here. It's like you have divine guidance inside guiding you and leading you it's like you know where you're being called to the soul the holy spirit is guiding you and leading you your higher self is pulling you in this direction so allow it to happen don't re don't resist the change don't resist the endings um and then learn from them but don't obsess you know uh, about thinking that you're not ready to move forward. Don't let that hold you back. Learn everything you can. Look at it completely straight on, but don't let it hold you back. The Hierophant. Um, this is something that is becoming well-established. It's long-term. It's, um, it's, it's got a firm, solid foundation. This could be doing something traditionally or getting involved with um, like a, uh, like an institution or a system. Um, for instance, Rosh Hashanah, I am going to live stream Rosh Hashanah through the Kabbalah Center. Um, KabbalahCenter.com, it's got all kinds of Kabbalah classes. The way that they teach Kabbalah is very like practical and how you apply it to your life. It's almost like you're workshopping your life, like in the Kabbalah classes. Uh, but yeah, Kabbalah.com, um, 
they live stream Rosh Hashanah. So if you want to be a part of that ritual and that tradition, you can, you can live stream it. Um, but yeah, there might be things that you are wanting to get involved with, um, but also the, the goals that you have, um, it's like the more you put into your spiritual practice and your spiritual devotion, it's like the more solid your foundation is spiritually, the more solid your foundation is on the outside as well. And then Ace of Swords, new mindset, new outlook, new mental landscape, a new like surge of inspiration and clarity and like a uh, lack of, you've like cut through the fog, you've cut through the confusion and all the clutter and now it's like you're, you're, you're clear and you see, you see how to move forward. So yay, um, really great energy. Um, I would say just keep following your momentum and your instincts and your enthusiasm this week. And if you are feeling low, then I would say get a um, get deep cleaning and get some good spiritual nourishment going. And if you want, you could take a look at the Kabbalah Center, kabbalah.com. Um, they have, you know, free material. And then you can, uh, if you want to go deeper, you can start, you can sign up for a membership. And I have a membership there too. I started for a couple of years just doing like free things with them. Um, but over time, like I was just like, this is, this is the, one of the best things that I invest in. And it's not that much either. So between To Be Magnetic and, and Kabbalah Center, I'm perfectly happy and I don't regret anything I spend with them. All right, y'all. Well, I hope you have a good night. I will see y'all later. Please um, like, subscribe, comment. Um, whatever you do helps the video get out to other people so they can get the messages as well. So my it's my goal and my desire to make these videos so that it helps you, that it helps you get more out of your life, that it helps you get more depth and fulfillment and meaning, and that it helps you live with more ease and certainty and abundance and peace. So, and love in your life. All right, y'all. Well, take care. Ciao.